You've laid claim to having a unique uh, corporate strategy among your peers. What is your business model? What makes him from a different in his business strategy, and it has been the same since the foundation of the company, is that we avoid early stage research and we focus on niche therapeutic areas, specialist therapeutic areas. The key thing about avoiding early stage research is that it's the first part of the drug process, the drug development process, which takes a long time. Uh, it's very costly and you need to have many scientists and doctors to keep on making discoveries. So Imi Pharma struck a very interesting collaboration which has given us a number of our drugs um, up to now with the CNRS, which is the French National Research Institution. The CNRS is the largest fundamental research institution government funded uh, in Europe and they have a budget of about 3.3 billion euros and over 30,000 employees. So this allows us to cherry pick inventions which are discovered there, which we believe have a good potential commercially, globally and, and happen to be in, in specialist therapeutic areas. So we target in diseases which are not well met at all where there aren't many competing drugs available and we avoid having our own labs which, which means that, uh, that we manage to keep our internal costs low. So what drugs do you have in development? We have five lead drugs for the moment. Two are in clinical trials in people. The other three are at the preclinical stage and we have a pipeline also with another two platform technologies which we can use to develop further compounds in the future. Our most uh, advanced drug is called Lupuzol and that is a very special treatment for patients who are suffering from lupus. This is a very, very debilitating disease which, uh, which is chronic, so it lasts a lifetime. And there aren't currently any treatments for the disease, so people tend to take things like steroids, which are symptomatic treatments. Uh, secondly, drug is, uh, is, a, is an anti-cancer drug, which uh, is now just finished a phase one to a study. So this is the first time in humans, it's been dosed for about a year and we have seen more than 20% of, of patients which were previously on other treatments and had failed uh, with progressive disease and metastasis to stabilize. So Lupuzor is much more advanced, of course, because we finished some time ago now, phase one and phase two A and also phase two B. And the, the, the greatest thing and what makes us really proud uh, of Lupuzor is that it has recently been approved by the US FDA to go into phase three uh, in the United States with, uh, with what is called a special protocol assessment and also fast track approval. So what, what are the particular processes that a drug will go through in the development stage? Drugs take a long time to be discovered. So the longest part of the cycle is the preclinical uh, discovery and development. So once an invention is created, a compound has to go through rigorous testing preclinically, i.e. lab testing and some animal testing studies, which you have to do to ensure, first of all, that it's not really toxic, and secondly, get some uh, proofs of the mechanism of action and also of potential efficacy. So once that is complete, you are allowed to, to test uh, in humans. So the first study, it's called phase one, and that is typically in, in volunteers. Although in areas like cancer, for example, where we are testing a cancer drug, you can test uh, patients. So if phase one works and you see no toxicity, then you go into phase two. Now, phase two sometimes uh, is just one study, which is just called a phase two, but sometimes you can do uh, a small phase two and large phase two. So if phase two A in a small number of patients works well, then you go into phase two B and, you, and, then, and then you prove uh, the concept in a, in, a, in a larger setting. And then if they also pass, then the final phase where, where Lupuzor is gonna start now is called phase three. And that typically proves the results which you have seen in phase two. And if that meets the endpoints, then you have approval. What can you tell us about your research partners and corporate partnerships? Well, we have this, uh, this, this very important link and collaboration, a research collaboration, which we have had now for, um, I think, uh, more than 10 years. It's working very well, and it allows us to keep our internal costs low by, uh, by not having our own labs um, for, for, for discovery. Immuform funds research which takes place at the CNRS. Obviously, our contribution is tiny compared to, to the overall budget. This allows us access to probably about 50 scientists and uh, medical doctors um, in, uh, in the institution, which is, which is all over France. And the way the collaboration works with the CNRS is that we license the drugs exclusively to Immupharma. So Immupharma has the worldwide rights for these drugs exclusively. We progress development with our own funds 
we would find a partner unless we get it to a stage at the end where we can commercialize ourselves, and then we would pay the CNRS uh, either royalties on sales if we commercialize alone, or part of the revenues which we receive out of another partner if we do a corporate deal. Generally speaking, how is the pharmaceutical industry positioned at the moment, and what are its main challenges? The pharmaceutical industry right now, I guess, and is probably not the only the only sector um, in the market. Um, you know, the uh, the world economy is not uh, is not in a terribly good state at the moment. But the challenges which which the pharma um, industry is facing have been probably the same over a number of years now, which is patent expiries. Patent is obviously the reason why a company can capitalize on the years of research and millions of costs which have been spent or discovering and marketing a new compound. But at the end, the patent expires, and when the patent expires, anybody around the world is allowed to basically copy the drug and sell it at a very, very low cost because they haven't done the research and the marketing effort, which is why I think uh, there has been a fashion in the recent years that Big Pharma is really looking for uh, acquiring or licensing new compounds out of other companies, typically smaller ones like us. You have five drugs in development, so what's, what's next in the next few years for Imi Pharma? Well, we're at a very exciting stage, I think quite close to uh, possibly a very big inflection point for the company. We had a, uh, a corporate deal uh, which we closed in 2008 and 9 with a US company called Cephalon. It was initially an, an option on their, on their part to continue for a worldwide license with pre-agreed rights, well, pre-agreed terms, before we had the results of the phase two study which Imifam was running on Lubuzo. So when, when the results came out, uh, they exercised the option quite quickly. They paid us another 30 million. So, uh, so far we have received out of Cephalon 45 million. And then they progressed development at their own cost. They managed to get the drug now approved by the, the, by the FDA for the final phase three. Cephalon was acquired by a large company called Teva pharmaceutical industries um, last year and as part of our, of our original agreement of the contract they didn't have the right to assign um, Lupuzor onto a new entity and, and there was also a non-compete clause which, which came into place. So effectively we decided uh, with the agreement of Cephalon that we would take the drug back. So it's, it's great for us because hopefully we can, we, we, we can have a second bite at the cherry.